Hello adventurers, my name is Axel and this video is going to be my guide on how to play the Spell Weaver. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the basic mechanics of the class, what cards you should pick when leveling up, some pretty good card combos, and what items you should look out for while playing as the Spell Weaver. So, let's get to it. As a quick class overview, I can tell you that the Spell Weaver is going to be the AoE damage dealer of your team. While on some turns you may have to reposition or heal yourself, most of the time your main focus will be making use of her powerful lost card abilities to target and deal damage to multiple enemies in the same turn. Additionally, the core mechanic of the Spell Weaver resolves around her core card reviving either because even though your most powerful abilities result in a lost card, by using the top half of reviving either once per scenario, you can get all your lost cards back, allowing you to stay alive and avoid exhaustion for a little while longer while casting the same powerful spells on your enemies one more time. Please note that at this very moment, not all the cards from the tabletop game have been introduced to Gloomhaven Digital. With that being said, let me add that I have been playing the game non-stop since it came out, and I feel confident enough, even though I haven't been able to defeat the high cultists yet, freaking high cultists. Anyways, um, I feel confident enough to tell you my, which one are, in my opinion, the best cards to pick up when you level up. Once you get to level 2, you should be looking out for cards like A from the Ether and Flashing Burst. These are without a doubt the top cards that you should be looking out for. Let's start with A from the Ether. The top half of this card will give you a little extra healing in between rooms, which is always good to have to remove poisons or heal an ally whenever it's needed. While the bottom part will provide you with a summon that most of the time it will be attacking your enemies from a safe distance and during the early levels of the adventure it's a really decent card to have and as an ability is far more solid and reliable than some other cards like Ride the Wind, Freezing Nova, Crackling Air or Hardened Spikes. On the other hand we got Flashing Burst, a really powerful level 2 card that provides you with a non-loss attack 3 range 3 light generator ability that from now on you can follow up with Mana Bolt or Frost Armor consuming the light for the plus one attack on upcoming turns. It has a pretty quick initiative in comparison with the rest of the Spell Weaver cards that this of course will allow you to play early turns whenever it is needed. And finally, the bottom half provides you with a move forward that we already had in other cards but it is always good to have given the low mobility that the Spell Weaver has. Once you get to level 3, you're gonna want to pick Cold Fire. This is without a doubt one of the most powerful cards that the Spell Weaver has in her arsenal. The top half of, of this card is a non-loss action that allows you to AoE stun and damage your enemies if you consume fire, ice, or both of them at the same time. The only problem is that at level 3, you most likely won't have a consistent source of fire or ice. To make it work properly. This is why if you pick this card on level 3, you won't use it until later levels. And then on the other hand, not so powerful, on the bottom half you get a lost loot action that will allow you to pick up a substantial quantity of gold in the last room if it's used properly. Well, when you get to level 4, this, there's not really much to say at level 4 except that due to the lack of better options, I really encourage you guys to go back and get the card that you didn't pick up at level 2. Either um, Aid from the Ether or Flashing Burst or whatever you didn't pick up at that level, just go back and get it. At level 4, Fork Bean is the, is the card that you're gonna get offered and while it might seem a compelling option, let me tell you, it is not. To attack at level 4, even when hitting multiple targets, is not that good. Especially when at that level you're gonna start encountering more and more shielded enemies. So do yourself a favor, go back and pick another card, but don't pick Fork Bean. Then at level 5, 
the main component for your coal fires has finally arrived, chromatic explosion. First, the top half of these cars will create all those elements in a single action that will allow you to set up for coal fire in the next turn, while also dealing AOE damage to your enemies at the same time. Finally, the bottom, which is way more interesting than the top half in my opinion, will allow you to create any element that you want that most of the time of course would be either fire or ice and has a move to action that will allow you to reposition yourself and set up for the perfect goal fire next turn but more importantly a small detail about the bottom action is that it isn't a loss meaning that you can recover that card and use it one more time over and over again without the use of reviving either once you get to level 6 you will find Living Torch, which is a really, really good car. The top half of this car will provide you with an attack 4, range 3, immobilize, plus some splash damage if you consume the light element, and having already a source of light generation with flashing bursts, you can simply transform this already good car into a really powerful one. On the other hand, we have the bottom action, which gives us another summon option with better movement and range than the previous one. But the real reason that you want to play this summon is not for the range of the movement that it has, if not for the constant fire generation that it provides. That, as a matter of fact, is why you need to play more consistent cold fires, which is the whole purpose of this build. Okay then, when you get to level 7, you will realize that the level 7 cards for the spell weaver, as well as the level 8 and 9 are yet to be implemented in the game. And with that being said, I totally recommend you to go back and pick Engulf in Flames, which is one of the other cards that you got offered when you got to level 5. And it's gonna be a nice addition to your coal fire combos. The top option of this card will provide you with an attack for range 3 which is not at all bad and it comes with a fire generator that we're going to pair with the bottom of chromatic explosion for more core fires. Then the bottom of this card is kind of useless in my opinion because if you play the spell weaver like you're supposed to, you should never put yourself in a position where you get hit by a melee enemy and if you do, you most likely won't live to see those fire retaliates come to life. So just just play the top part of the car okay like don't don't ever use the bottom <laughs> so we finally come to the point that we have all the cars that we need for our combos as you can see in the screen right now on the top left we have our core cards which are gonna be reviving either and mana bolts mana bolt quick initiative is gonna allow you for quick heals whenever you need it you can consume any element for a plus one attack at range three. It's a really good, really good, good card. Then on the lower left, we got the light combo, comprehended by flashing boards and living torch. These two cards have really good synergy with one another, dealing damage and creating light in one turn, then consuming light in the following turn for some spicy splash damage. But also guys, keep in mind, that the bottom part of Living Torch is the summon that every time it attacks is going to generate the fire element for you to consume in cold fire combos. Finally, on the right side are your cold fire combo cards. The bottom of Chromatic Explosion can be used to reposition yourself and create any element that you want, which is going to be most of the time ice, while Ungulfing Flames and Fire Orbs create the fire for you, setting up for a really nice cold fire the following turn. And then of course, if you want to play more defensively with the Spell Weaver, you can always swap one of the cards like Fire Orbs or Engulfing Flames with Frost Armor, allowing you to tank a couple hits and also having an extra ice generator for your cold fire combos. When it comes to the items, these are the items that I do recommend to get when playing as a spell weaver. Uh, in the helmet, the eagle eye googles are in my opinion really good. They're gonna give you advantage for the whole duration of the attack. If you cannot get one of those, just go for the telescopic lens, which will give you plus two range to your entire attack action. 
As a chest armor, the spell weaver already comes with the cloak of invisibility by default, but if you feel like changing it and doing something different, which I do not recommend, try the blinking cape, which is in my opinion the second best option that you may have. As a weapon, I do recommend getting either one of frost or one of fire, which they're gonna allow you to create the element that you're missing for completing your cold fire combo. For the boots, I chose rocket boots, which are, in my opinion, the best boots on the game right now, but they're kind of hard to come by. If you cannot get one of these, just go for boots of striding, which are also really good. As far as consumables go, the spell weaver already comes with a minor power potion by default. Just add a minor healing potion on top of that, and whenever you get the chance to upgrade them, do it, get the major power and the major healing potions for your arsenal. As you get to level 5, 6, 7 and you get access to more consumables, add the scroll of healing to your arsenal. This will allow you to heal teammates or remove diva from them whenever it's needed. That's gonna be it for this video guys. If you like it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as we're gonna keep uploading more Gloomhaven videos soon. Also let us know in the comment what is in your opinion the best spell we record and the best item that you should get while playing as her. Thanks again and I'll see you in the dungeons.